the Earth is now starting to get closer to being hospitable to people like us or animals like us. In the last video, we saw during the Proterozoic eon, oxygen began to accumulate in the atmosphere. This actually caused this first snowball Earth and this mass extinction of all the anaerobic species. But it made conditions suitable for eukaryotic cells. And maybe even more important, these eukaryotic cells were able to form multicellular organisms. And we see where that starts right here on this chart, on this time clock. Mul multicellular life. Starts right over here. And I want to be clear, all of these things are a bit moving targets. As we discover more things in the geological record and we get more tools at our disposal, these numbers get tweaked. But they do give you a good sense, based on our current understanding, of when these things start to appear. And coinciding with multicellular life, and this is interesting in its own right because it has its own meta level effect on evolution, you actually start also having sexual reproduction. Sexual. Reproduction. And what's interesting about this, why this has such a big impact on evolution, and we talk about it a lot in the biology playlist, is before evolution, variation in DNA had to be completely dependent really on mutations and just random movement around within DNA or maybe some viruses. Now with sexual reproduction, you had kind of a, a systematic mixing of DNA so that you got more variation in the gene pool, which allowed uh, more selection for, uh, or I guess you had uh, more vari more variants to select for, and so you kind of had an acceleration in the actual pace of evolution. So that's what we're talking. You know, I've looked at a bunch of sources from, they say, 1.2 billion, 1.5 billion, a little bit over a billion if you call a little bit several hundred million years ago. You start having these multicellular life forms and sexual reproduction. The other thing that we talked about in the Proterozoic eon is the accumulation of oxygen allowed the ozone layer to build up. Ozone is just three oxygen atoms. It is O3. And by the end of the Proterozoic eon, so we're talking, I don't know, maybe 550 million years ago, give or take tens of or, hundred, or maybe even 100 million years. These are all moving targets. The ozone layer was dense enough to protect the land from UV rays. We talked about that in the last video. That, it was, that, the, land, that the Earth is being bombarded with UV rays, and the ozone layer is what the only thing that really keeps us from being seriously irradiated by the sun and allows land animals to actually live. And so coinciding with that that time period around 550 million years ago, you start to have life colonizing, especially significant life colonizing land. So life colonizes land. Colonizes the land. And this was kind of an interesting, when I first learned it, it was kind of a, an aha moment. You always assume that, that kind of trees and grasses are kind of part of the background. They come, they come part and parcel with land. But it turns out that animals colonized land before plants did. Plants didn't come into the picture until about 450 million years ago, give or take a, a, a few tens of millions of years. And so we're now entering the end of the Proterozoic eon. Life has started to colonize land. We now have an ozone layer. And what happens, and actually there's another snowball glaciation or, or snowball Earth near the end of the Proter Proterozoic er eon, I should say. And there's a bunch of theories about why it came about and then why it disappeared. Maybe there were volcanoes, greenhouse gases, who knows. But as we enter the end of that, we start seeing life begin to flourish. And it starts to really flourish as we enter the Phanero I have always, I always have trouble saying this. The Phanerozoic Eon. And this right, it's not even labeled here. The Phanerozoic Eon is this is this chunk of time right over here. And let me write it out. So this right over here is the Phanero Phanerozoic, the Phanerozoic Eon. Eon. And so this chart, they kind of, these divisions right here are eons, and then they jump into, instead of doing eons here, they then broke, break into eras. Eras are subsets of eons. They're hundreds of millions of years. So this is the Paleozoic era, the Mesozoic era, and the Cenozoic era, and that's actually our current era. But Perhaps the most interesting, well, I don't want to pick favorites here, but it's one of the most interesting times in the geologic era, is the first period in the, Paleozo in the Paleozo Paleozoic era, era which, is the first, which is the first era in the Phanerozoic 
eon, and that's the Cambrian period. You might have heard of it before, the Cambrian period. That's about this, this period of time right over here. Cambrian. And during this period of time, the Earth experiences what, what we call the Cambrian explosion. And that's because there's just this uh, explosion in the number of, of, of species and, and genera that existed, the biodiversity on the planet. It might just be that we had the ozone layer protecting us. Things were colonizing land. It was an oxygen-rich environment. We start seeing uh, uh, complex multicellular organisms. It's about that time. If, if you fast forward maybe a few tens of millions of years, you start seeing the first fish, the first kind of uh, pre-amphibians or proto-amphibians. You fast forward a little bit as we get out of the Cambrian period. We start seeing we start seeing plants. So they actually draw it right over here on this land plants, or at this point right over here. And of course, these are moving targets depending on what we discover in the fossil record. And for me, at least, you know, the, the big aha moment here is so many of these things that you consider fundamental to uh, a, what Earth is are relatively recent phenomena. Plants weren't on land until about 450 million years ago. Insects weren't on land, or, or did not even exist, until about 400 million years ago. Reptiles didn't exist until about 300 million years ago. So we are about. We're about right over here now. Mammals didn't exist until about 200 million years ago. Birds didn't exist until about 150 million years ago. The whole dinosaur age, which we kind of consider you know, in our distant past, that's essentially the Mesozoic era right here. So this is the age of the dinosaurs right over here. When you look at your time clock, you can see it's a relatively recent a time period, and it actually ends with, are we currently believe, a, a, a huge rock, a six mile in diameter rock colliding with what is now the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, right off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. And it destroyed all of the large land life forms, especially the dinosaurs. And to put all of this in, in, in perspective, and actually the, the thing that really was an aha moment for me, you know, it's okay, plants are 450 million years ago. Grass, I kind of view as this fundamental thing in nature, but grass has only been around for about, I've seen multiple estimates, 40 to 70 million years. Grass is a relatively new thing on the planet. Flowers have only been around for 130 million years. So there was a time where you had dinosaurs, but you did not have flowers and you did not have grass. And so you fast forward all the way. And so when you look at this scale, it's kind of funny to look at. They say, okay, this is where this is the time period where the dinosaurs showed up. This brown, this whole brown line is where the mammals showed up. So the dinosaurs started to show up along with the mammals. And then of course the dinosaurs died out here. Our ancestors when the asteroid when the when the giant rock hit the earth must have been burrowed in holes and were or able to stash some food away or who knows what and and didn't get fully affected. I'm sure some of many most of the large mammals were destroyed. But what's almost uh, it's humbling or almost humorous or almost ridiculous when you look at this chart is they put a little dot, you can't even see it here, a little bar. They say 2 million years ago, the first humans. And even this is being pretty generous when they say first humans. These are really the first pre-humans. The first humans that are uh, the same as us, if, if you took one of those babies and you, you brought them up in the suburbs and gave them haircuts and stuff, they would be the same thing as we are. Those didn't exist until 200 thousand years ago, give or take, you know, 200,000 to 400,000 years ago, I've seen estimates. So this is actually a very generous uh, 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 a period of time to say first humans. It's actually 200,000 years ago. And just to give you an idea of, of how new we are and, and how new our evolution is, it was only 5 million years ago, and I mentioned this in a previous video, it was only 5 million ago. So this is just to get a sense. This is zero years. Homo sapiens sapien, only around for 200,000 years. The Neanderthals, they were cousin species. They weren't our ancestors. Many people think they were. They were cousin species. We come from the same root, although there are now theories that uh, they might have remixed in with 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 Homo sapiens. So maybe some of us have uh, uh, some Neanderthal DNA. And it shouldn't be viewed as an insult. You know, they had big brains. Well, they didn't necessarily have big brains. They had big heads, but that seems to imply a big brain. But who knows? We, we always tend to uh, portray them as, as somehow inferior, but well, I don't want to get into the political correctness of how to portray uh, Neanderthals. But anyway, this is a very small 
small period of time. Two hundred. If you go two million years, then you get to kind of the pre-human, the pre-human ancestors, and our 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 family tree only diverged from the chimpanzees five million years ago. If you put, if you draw that on this clock right here, it would barely make. It would be like two pixels, or maybe not even two pixels, is when we diverged from the chimpanzees. So hopefully that gives you a, a sense of things. At least, at least for me, it really uh, puts things in perspective.